Amen. Good morning, Church of God. Good morning. Amen and amen. And as Jasper had told a while ago, we were from, uh, just came from the event, Outpour event in Church of God, Dasmeas. Pwede ko po makita sino mga nakasama doon sa Outpour event. Amen and amen. And who would say that Jesus is dead in this season? Diba? Who, who would dare say that? Why? Because God's presence, Jesus Christ, was there in that event, in our outdoor event. And we had truly experienced the supernatural power of our God. And do you want to experience God's presence today here in church? Amen. amen. If you believe in that, pwede ba natin palakpakan ng ating Panginoon? Amen. And amen. And let's proceed to our word of God today. But first, do you know this person? Who knows this person? Uh, the, the kid over there is Nick Vujicic, and he was born with no legs, no arms, all four limbs was gone. And he grew up like that until he grew old as a man, he had no limbs at all. So people would say, or even himself would say, I think I'm worthless. I'm nothing to this world. Why? Because I'm broken. And maybe he could say, or the people could say, this man is cursed. Right? Nick Vujicic is cursed. But you know what? This man didn't accept that. He didn't stop there. He didn't say, it's the, the end of the world for me. It's over for my life. He didn't say that. But what did he do? He just allowed God to move in his life. And what happened to, the, to him today? You know what? He's already preaching God's word throughout all the nations. And he's been a blessing to the millions of millions of people. And his life didn't stop there. Today po, he has his own family, he has his own child, he has his wife, and his child is very healthy. Pwede ba natin palapakan ang ating Panginoon for that, for his life? What an amazing life, right? We think that we are worthless, we are nothing, but God could do miraculous things in our lives. And the same goes with our Bible character for today. So who is our Bible character for the month of March? So it's Zerubbabel, still Zerubbabel until the last day, last Sunday of March. And let's open our Bibles in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. If you have your Bibles with you, you may open it to Zechariah 4, verse 10. And it says here, For who has despised the day of small things? Who has despised the day of small beginnings? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Could we bow down our heads and let us pray? Hallelujah, far in heaven. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, we invite your presence, Lord God, to be in this place. Lord God, we don't want to do this by might, nor by power, but only by your spirit. Lord God, Holy Spirit, we ask you to interfere, interfere in our program, interfere in our plans, Lord God, and we welcome your spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you are alive, Lord God, and you're going to move in every heart, in every life today. Lord God, we claim the victory, and we give you back all the glory and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, amen, amen and amen. Could you just give God our very best clap offering again? <laughs> amen. So, if we check the verse, what does it mean? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng despise? Could you ask your seatmate, what does it mean? Ano bang meaning nitong despise? So I didn't know that also, but when I checked the dictionary, this is what it means. It is to regard with disgust or to regard as worthless. So we could see like Nick Vujicic, people may say that he's disgusting. Why? He has no limbs. What's wrong with him? People may say or he himself may say, Nick Vujicic is worthless, but wow, how amazing could God do and move through worthless people and make them, wow, very significant. And in relation with Zerubbabel, is, is Zerubbabel's life also like this? Is his life truly despised? So like, let's check out his family background. Tignan natin ano bang meron sa life ni Zerubbabel with his family. And it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 7 to 18, it says, And the sons of Jeconiah were Asir, Shiatiel, his son, and Malkarim, Pedea, Shenazar, Jacomiah, Hoshama, and Nabadiah. The sons of Pedea were Zerubbabel and Shimei. So this is their family. And there are so many names, so many words, and we may not understand it, so let's put it in a graph, put it in a table. So this is their grandfather. This is Jeconiah, and he had eight children, all eight children, uh, release all the eight children. So ang daming anak ni Jeconiah, and you know what? 
under Pidea, this is where you could find Zerubbabel. So this is their family. This is their royal family. This is a royal family. And what does God say about this family? It says in Jeremiah 22, sabi ng Panginoon, As I live, says the Lord, though Coniah, which is Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were, were the signet of my right hand. They were in authority pala. They were royalty. They were kings and queens of the land. But what did God do to their family, to their father there? Yet, I would pluck you off. So, ganun pala nangyari. Because of their foolishness, because of their evilness, they didn't follow God, they disobeyed God. They were plucked off. They were taken out of their throne. And what did happen to them? And I will give you into the hand of those who seek your life and into, into the hand of those whose face you fear, the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and the hand of the Chaldeans. So did, did, did this happen? Did the Babylonians conquer the land? Right? Diba? For the past weeks, for the past Sundays, we've talked about that. The temple was destroyed. Why? Because of their foolishness and the Babylonians conquered the land. So the people would say, the people of the land would say, is this man, Kunaya, a despised and broken idol? So this is how the people look at him. He's worthless. He's nothing. Their father, their family. This is a broken family. Walang kwenta yung pamilya na to. A vessel in which is no pleasure. There's no pleasure in her family. So why are they cast out, he and his descendants, and cast into a land which they do not know? So what happened with them? What did they do? What's wrong with them? And God answered them. Thus says the Lord, write this man down as childless. So wow, because of their foolishness, because of their evilness, they were cursed. God pronounced upon Jeconiah, you're going to be childless. You're not going to be in my, in my uh, genealogy. And says, a man who shall not prosper in his days. Hindi daw pagpapalain ang buhay ni Jeconiah. For none of his descendants also shall prosper. So this includes Zerubbabel. He's a descendant of Jeconiah. And Zerubbabel as well won't be blessed sitting on the throne of David and ruling anymore in Judah. So this is the family of Zerubbabel. They are despised. They are worthless. They are nothing. They are broken. They were captives, taken captives from the Babylon. And finally, pinakamasaklap, they are a cursed family. They are a cursed people. So little did we know, we've been talking about Zerubbabel for the past Sundays. Little did we know that this is the family pala of Zerubbabel. So if in, I'm in the case of Zerubbabel, man, I don't want to serve God anymore. I don't want to go to church anymore. I'm nothing. I'm worthless. But this is what we're going to talk about today. The journey in experiencing the power of God in your life. Do you want that to happen today? Amen. Amen. So are you excited to hear God's word? Amen. I'm also excited to preach to you God's word. So this is the first verse that is said in Zechariah chapter 4. So it says here, For who has despised the day of small things? Who has belittled the day of small things? Who has uh, said worthless yung mga small beginnings natin? So you remember the ministry of my dad. So may, meron po ba mga taga COG Dasma dito? Yeah, may mga galing COG Dasma. And this is the start of our church. In Church of God, uh, Dasmarinas, my dad and mom started the church in Dasmarinas. So in Dasmarinas, for the old folks here, Dasmarinas is not a good place. It's not a good province. Why? Because the people from Manila, they bring their, uh, their people to Dasmarinas. And what do they do? They salvage them there. So it's not a popular city. It's not a popular province. And the church started at a very small home. Just like this one. It's the, exactly the place where the church started. It's a, the house of a church member. And they started with three members. So no roads at all. It's beside a creek. So mabaho. It's beside a piggery. So when the wind blows to them, wow. Just imagine the smell. And with this, with this, uh, with this situation, somehow you could not boast about it. Somehow you could not be proud about it. And I assure you, the family of my dad was not proud of what my dad is doing. So maybe at that time, they were despised. They were seen as worthless. They were seen as nothing. But 
Look at how God blessed them today. This is how Church of God Das Marinas looks like today. So, may mga nakapunta na po ba doon sa Church of God Das Marinas? Amen, di ba? So this is how it looks like. What a beautiful church. What a beautiful temple. And they are blessed. We are blessed with 12,000 strong members. Amen? So, pwede ba natin palakpakan si Lord for that? That's our church in Church of God. That's Marinas. And now, I, I get to the point right now na, Lord, somehow I despise our small start at Marriott Manila. Church of God, Marriott Manila. Why? Sabi ko, Lord, it's already six months. Lord God, we're about to end our seventh month. Lord, but why is it like that? Our attendance is not growing. We're a steady 130 from the first month to the seventh month. Lord, why are we not increasing? So somehow I'm despising our small beginning. I'm despising our small start. So God rebuked me through his word. God has spoken through me through his word and he said to me, how dare you despise the day of small things? How dare you? despise the small beginning that you have. And God says in his word in Haggai 2.19, this is his word for us, is the seed still in the barn? Is the seed, is what you're doing still not yet working today? Is the seed still in the barn? Wala pa bang nasisimulan in what you're doing? Or as yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yet yielded fruit? Yes, just like us, maybe we have started already, but Wala pa ring bunga. There's no fruit still in what we're doing. Is that what's your happening in your life right now? But God says in His Word, but from this day, I will bless you. Amen. Do you want to claim? Sige, palakpakan natin si Lord John. Let's claim that blessing for all of us. I claim that for our church, that we will grow from this day forward. And what is God telling us today? God could turn your nothingness into greatness. Why? Because God holds the universe. God, the silver is His, the gold is His. And He could make your nothingness into greatness. And that's what happened to Zerubbabel's life, right? For the past weeks, we've talked about from nothing pala, now he has become successful in rebuilding God's holy temple. Second, it says, For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. So, meron po bang mga construction dito? Do you know what a plumb line is? What is a plumb line? So I'm an engineer, but I didn't fully understand what a plumb line really means. So this is a plumb line. This is what you use uh, in buildings. And I called my architect, I called an engineer to further understand what does it does do. And sabi po sa meaning niya, it's used for buildings to test its verticality. So it, it, it's used for hollow blocks, it's used for the walls, for that you may make sure that the building stands up straight. But somehow, ano daw, hindi ko pa rin maintindihan, what are you trying to say, what are you trying to describe? So basically, when I saw this picture, I further understand what it does. So who wants a slanted house, di ba? Who wants a slanted mansion? So basically, if you don't want your house to look like this, Use a plumb line. Use a hulog. Hulog po yan sa Tagalog, di ba? Use a hulog. Doon pala nang galing yun kapag tayo ay makulit, tayo ay hindi sumusunod, tayo ay wala sa hulog. So yun po ang gagamitin natin. Gamitan natin ng plumb line ng ating buhay so that we may be set in the standard of our God. So use a plumb line to set and establish your house straightly. And what, is, what does it mean when it is in the hands of Zerubbabel? So in verse 21 to 22, it says, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. So what does this mean? Why? Because Zerubbabel, what God is wanting to do is to plant good seeds in the land. That's their very task in rebuilding the temple. But it's hard to put seeds when the, when the land is full of bushes, right? When the land is full of thorns. When the land of, is full of rocks. May mga farmers ba dito, di ba? You want your land to be plain, to be clean, so that you may plant it out properly. But there are, there are leaders, there are governors in the land that are not good people, and they need to be removed. In the same way, uh, 2016, May 9, 
It will be our election day. May mga buboto po ba dito? I pray that we will vote wisely and not only wisely, but pray for all your votes. It's going to be our election 2016. And when we try to understand that, how we want to plant good seeds in our land in the Philippines. Amen? We want our city to be reborn. We want our city to be born again. And it's going to be hard if you have corrupt leaders. It's going to be hard if you have evil and foolish president and senators and all the leaders in the government. And that's, what, that's the very thing that God is telling us today. Let's remove all those corrupt people that the Philippines may be born again and we may have that victory and blessing for our country. Amen? Amen. Sige po palakpakan natin si Lord. So it says in his word in Haggai 2.23, In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheatiel, says the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord. Wow. From a broken family, from a broken life, he has become a signet ring of the Lord. And a signet ring means God has given him the authority. God has given him the power to make things happen in his land. And he's now going to have the power to plant that seeds. Not only that, but to overthrow the people, the wrong governors of the land. And this is what God could do. God could turn broken into chosen. So if you have a broken life, if you came from a broken family, man, that's not a problem with our God. He could make you a chosen one and God could use you mightily in our generation. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in the last verse, it says, they are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. And as we plant our good seeds in this land, God will not forsake us, God will not leave us, but he's going to watch carefully in our church. Yan ang gagawin ng Panginoon. God will watch what we're doing in our ministry. And you know what? In this, in this whole chapter of Zechariah chapter 4, it's actually a vision given to Zechariah to be told to Zerubbabel. And this is how it goes in Zechariah 4, verses 1 to 3. It says, Now, the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? So I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl, bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes, the seven lamps, and two olive trees are by it. One at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So there's so many words again to this verse. And let's make it simple, but this is how it looks like. This is the vision that God is, had given to Zechariah to be told to Zerubbabel. So there is a lampstand. That's the one in the middle. It has seven pipes. It has seven lamps. And what does a lamp do, basically? A lamp gives light. That's its task. And this represents the church. This represents us. For the church shall be the salt and light of this city. The church shall be the salt and light of our country. Yun pala, kabigat ang task natin bilang church of God. The church that bears God's name. We need to continually light up in our lives, in our generation. And how does it light up? How does it continue lighting? There should be that oil so that it may continue lighting. And that oil passes through those two pipes from those two trees. And the oil represents the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit continues, continually flows in our lives, for sure, we're going to continually be fired up in the ministry and transform this country into a born-again Pilipinas. Amen. Hallelujah. So the question is, ano ba yun? Ano ba yung two olive trees na nandun? And it says in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 11, 11 to 12. Why? Because the oil comes from those trees. Eh? The oil are coming from those trees. So what are those two trees? And God said, and I, then the angel and the Zechariah answered and said to him, What are these two olive trees? I don't understand. At the right of the lampstand and at its left. And I further answered and said to him, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of those two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? Why? Because the church is continually lit up 
by the, the oil, right? And the oil is coming from those two olive trees. So just like me, just like Zechariah, Lord, what are those olive trees? Or who are those olive trees? Then God answered, the angel answered him in verse 14, it says, These are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. And as I've researched about this, the two olive trees represents Zerubbabel and his assistant, Joshua. Zerubbabel and Joshua. And I thought God had cursed this family. I thought God had cursed the family of Zerubbabel that they're going to be childless. They're not going to prosper anymore. They're not going to go back to the throne anymore. That's the prophecy upon them. That's the verdict upon them. They are proven guilty and they shall never prosper anymore. But this is our God. God could turn cursed into blessed. That's what God could do. God could turn your cursed life into a blessed life. And that's what happened to Zerubbabel. Right now, the Holy Spirit is flowing upon him and is able to lead the church well, the temple where, the temple very well to give glory to our God. Amen. And today, before I close, I would like to invite a good friend of mine to come up here on stage. And he's going to share his testimony from uh, a not good old self into a new life and now mightily used by God. So, could you give a hand to Jasper in sharing his testimony? Hello po. Ayan, good morning po ulit. And I'm back. And, uh, pa- alam ko po yung iba, kilala na po ako. But ayan niyo po ulit ako magpakilala. You can call me Brother Jasper. I am Jasper Villanueva. At gusto ko lang pong i-share sa inyo ng konti. Konti lang po. Iramin ko lang po konti yung time nyo sa buhay ko. So, uh, nakita ko rin po yung sarili ko, yung mga pinagdaanan ko po kay Zerubbabel. And alam nyo po, uh, before ko yun i-share, gusto ko lang po sabihin na andito po ako ngayon sa church and I'm handling the relationship department. And if God is calling you or uh, God is telling you that you need to be in the ministry. We have a lot of ministry here in our church. So you can uh, uh, pwede po kayo sa, uh, sa youth department, men's, ladies ministries or gusto nyo po maging usher, pwede po, you can approach me lang po. Pero po ngayon, g- ngayon po, pag-usapan muna po natin konti yung buhay ko lang po. And ako po, uh, bilang isang bata pa po ako, mukha lang po ako matanda and ako po ay kabataan pa po Uh, sa 20 pa lang po ako, yan, ganyan po. And alam nyo po, pinalaki po ako ng aking parents na Sunday school. Bata pa lang ako, gusto niya lagi ako nasa Sunday school. Sa faith center pa po yun, naalala ko pa po, Jesus faith. And I'm very active, gusto ko po lagi sa simbahan. Uh, para, hindi po para makinig, para po uh, makipaglaro lang, mangulit, at uh, manggulo sa loob ng simbahan. Pero alam nyo po, ang parents ko, denied niya po kami, hindi niya po kami pinabayaan, napalaki, napalaki po kami ng maayos, napalaki niya po kami ng tama. And habang po ako ilumalaki, nakikita ko po yung blessing ni Lord, umaapaw, walang napagkukulang, parang feeling ko sobrang yaman namin. Iba kami, angat kami sa ibang pamilya, and naging mayabang ako, unti-unti, Uh, sabi ko, kaya kong bilhin yan. Pabili lang ako ng ganito. Gusto ko nito. Gusto ko niyan. Okay. Okay yung buhay. Uh, ganito pala kay Lord. Uh, sarap. Na naging, uh, ano ang tawag doon? Samantala. Sinamantala mo. Yung kabaitan ng Panginoon. Hindi ko napapansin. Mali na yung ginagawa ko. And me- medyo mahirap po maging Kristiyano. Tama po ba? Hindi po madali. Lalo na po ako sa school. Sa, uh, ang tawag dito? Uh, sa lugar po namin. Sa compound. Compound po namin, kami lang po yung Christian and medyo nanggit po ako sa mga pinsan ko, sa mga classmate ko, nagagawa po nila yung lahat ng kalokohan nila. And nandun po yung inggit, bakit sila? Ang daya naman, buti pa sila, nagagawa nila yung ganyan. Bakit sila? Pwede nilang gawin yung hirap naman maging Christian. Bakit ba sumusunod pa kay Lord at ang hirap naman ang pinapagawa ni Lord? Di ba po? And yun nga po, nag-college na ako, dinala po ako sa Manila kasi po gusto ko maging PBA player. That's my one and only dream nung bata pa po ako. At nagpunta po akong FEU. Marami po akong university pinuntahan. Nag, nag-team B po ako doon. Nag-varsity ako ng basketball. And ito po na po yung pagkakataon. Sabi ko nga po kay Lord, Lord, ito na yung pagkakataon. Nakalayo na ako sa magulang ko. 
Uh, pumasok po ako ng ministry ng bata ko sa Church of God po yon mga 8 to 10 years ago. Umalis po ako sa ministry ko. Kala ko magiging okay doon. Nagpaalam ako. Sabi ko rin kay Lord, Oh Lord, Pahinga muna ako sa'yo. Ha? Dito na ako sa Manila. Hindi na, wala nang nakakakita sa akin. Sige, ito na. Temptation. Yan. Banat na ng kasalanan. Sige. Uh, sirain mo na yung buhay mo. Nasira ko na yung buhay ko. And yun nga po, lahat na ng bisyo. Halos karamihan doon. Natry ko na matindi ang temptation. Nasa Manila ka. Party, party. At ayun nga po, dumating po sa point na hindi ko po nare-realize na naapektuhan na rin po pala yung family ko. Ayun po. Ah, uh, Hindi ka... Sorry po ah, medyo emotional lang kasi po ayoko na po sana itong balikan pero si Lord nung usap sa akin to share this to you. At nung di ko po na, na mamalayan na yung family ko, affected na rin pala sila. So napansin ko, magulo na sa bahay, away na, at na nalalaman ko, ah, napapagalitan na nila ako, nauwi ako ng bahay from Manila, wala na pala kaming pambayad ng kuryente, ng tubig. Uh, wala na pala kaming pang grocery. Yung dating, yung wallet mo, apaw-apaw, yung dating, wala lang sa'yo yung pera. Ngayon, pambihira, ano nangyayari? Yung father ko, nawawala na siya ng work. Diba? Nagkasakit siya, hindi siya makatrabaho. Paano na kami? At first time, nagbubunot kami ng refrigerator. Uh, hindi, hindi na namin namamalayan kasi wala na kaming pambayad ng kuryente. Naungutang na kami, wala na rin kaming pambayad sa pinagkakautangan namin. Nagagalit na lahat sa amin. Uh, binabato na kami ng kung ano-ano. Iniwan na kami lahat ng kaibigan namin kasi wala na kami pere. Wala na eh. Wala ka ng friends. And wala na rin po ako sa church. And alam nyo po, uh, dumating yung point na yon nagalit ako sa Panginoon. Uh, Mayaw ako ng konti sa Panginoon. Sabi ko nga po, uh, Lord, kala ko okay tayo. Uh, minsan lang naman to eh. Konti lang naman. Nag-church pa rin naman ako, di ba? Wala, naman, wala man ako sa ministry, nagsisimba pa rin naman ako. And natutunan ko nga po nung outpour, madali po palang pikein, madali po lang ma-fake yung uh, pagiging Christian po natin. Kaya natin pumunta every Sunday, kaya natin kumanta, kaya natin mag-serve sa Panginoon, pero yun po ako eh. Sa loob ng church, iba ako. Pero paglabas ko ng church, ibang klaseng tao rin ako. Iba rin yung kaibigan ko, iba yung pinakikisamahan ko. And ayun, Kinausap ako nung iba kong friends from Church of God, Dasma, at lalong-lalo na po si Pastor AJ. Hindi niya po akong, kasi po nung bata pa lang po kami, magkasama na kami, sabay mag-aaral, sabay ganyan. And lagi niya po akong tinetext, tinatawagan, uh, usap muna tayo, banding, fellowship lang. Ginagawa niya po ng paraan para makabalik ako sa church. Pero po, sabi ko, uh, alam ko na yan eh, pasok dito, alam niyo po ba yun? Tapos labas dito. Pinapakinggan ko siya. Nag-uusap kaming dalawa. Gusto niya ako mabalik sa church. Gusto niya, ayaw niyang ma- mawala ako, ayaw niyang masira ako. Ganun po siya ka-concern sa akin. Sabi ko, hindi. Alam ko na yan. Pagdaanan ko na yan. Ginaganito nga ako ng Panginoon. Ayoko. Broken yung family ko. Dumating sa point na ayoko na sa bahay, magulo. Nahanap ko yung uh, family sa mga tropa ko. Inom, ganyan, gala, party. Yan. And ilang beses po yan, paulit-ulit. Mga pinapalipas na yung ilang buwan. Si Pastor AJ, text pa rin sa akin. And ayoko pa rin. pasok dito, labas dito. And meron pong isang point noon, last year, na bagyo. Hindi ko man po natupad yung aking pangarap. Kapag usap ulit kami ni Pastor AJ, hindi ko po alam kung paano nangyari. Pero tumama po sa akin yung Panginoon. Nangusap po sa puso ko yung Panginoon. Hindi ko na rin po alam kung ano po nangyayari sa sarili ko noon. And dumating na po yung punto na grabe yung galaw sa akin ng Holy Spirit. And talagang lumapit ako ulit. Sabi ko nga po kay AJ, uh, bro, sige, saan mo ako sa ganito, kita ulit tayo sa ganito. And kumatindo ulit ako ng Sunday service, ibang klase. Ibang klase na po yung tama sa akin. And doon na po ako nag-decide. And nag-decide na po ako noon na try ko ulit. Try ko ulit po yung ginagawa ko. Basa ako Bible, mag-pray ulit ako. <coughs> Attend ako every Sunday. And unti-unti po, nangungusap sa akin yung Panginoon. Unti-unti po, nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon kasi naniniwala ako yung Panginoon. Hindi yan magsasawa sa atin. At ang Panginoon hindi napapagod at hindi tayo pagsasawa ng Panginoon. God will give us grace. He's a merciful God. And alam niyo po tayong anak niya. Hinihintay niya lang po pala tayo. Pinakita niya lang sa akin yung mundo. Kung gano'ng kapangit yung mundo. Kung paano kapangit yung mundo kung wala siya. Kasi lang po yung pinakita niya sa akin. Pinaunawa niya lang pala sa akin. 
And ngayon po, nagpapasalamat din po ako sa Panginoon. Ito po yung nagiging strength ko bilang isang relationship head dito sa Marriott. Ayoko na pong maranasan niyo yung buhay na ganun. Kasi po napagdanasan ko na po yun. Mahirap, magulo, masakit. And sabi nga po ng mga leader ko, okay na po ang pamilyang nasa ministry lahat na walang pera. Kesa po ang marami kang pera, sira naman yung pamilya mo. Amen po ba doon? Kaya po ngayon, uh, glory to God, unti-unti po, yung parents ko, yung kapatid ko, gi-involve na po sila sa ministry. Sumunod lang po ako sa Panginoon at nagpapasalamat po ako sa Panginoon. Binigay niya ako ng pangalawang pagkakataon. And ganyan po, tinawag po ako ng Panginoon dito. Binigyan po ako ng salita ng Panginoon, also there in Zechariah. So, talaga pong kumunik kami ni Pastor AJ dyan. At out of nowhere, nagkagulatan kami. Di namin alam, speechless. Yung sinasabi sa akin ng Panginoon, yun din yung sinasabi sa kanya ng Panginoon. Wala na kami nasabi. Di namin alam paano yun. It's all, it's all God eh. Siya talaga. Alam nyo nga po, mabasa nyo yung uh, word sa akin ni Lord in Zechariah 6. Pinapagawa niya sa akin to build this temple. And inumpisa na po natin yan ngayon dito sa Church of God, Marriott. At kailangan po namin kayo, kasama po namin kayo. Magtulungan po tayo bilang isang pamilya, bilang isang anak ng Panginoon. Nagpapasalamat po ako sa Panginoon na binigyan niyo ulit ako ng opportunity. Ito po kasi, privilege po kasi to para sa akin. Galing po ako doon, nasira, broken, na curse, nawala lahat. Pero ngayon po, unti-unti ako sumusunod sa Panginoon. Ginagawa ko po kung ano man yung gusto niyang ipagawa sa akin. At sabihin ko po sa inyo, unti-unti rin po yung pera na lang po yung nasunod sa akin. At ganun po ang napakaganda po sa Panginoon. Wala ka nang dapat problemahin. Sumunod ka lang sa Panginoon. Alam niyo po, huwag mo nang problemahin kahit ano pa yan. Sila na yung susunod. Yung problema na yung susunod sa iyo, yung, yung problema mo sa pera, kusa na yan darating sa iyo, sila na yung susunod sa iyo, hindi mo na yan nahanapin. Ganun po kabuti ang Panginoon po sa atin. At ako po yung nagpapasalamat for this opportunity, for this privilege to serve God. Nga po, madami na po ako natututunan and ako po ay nagahangad pa ng, uh, alam niyo po yun, knowledge and wisdom sa aking mga leaders. At hindi lang po yun, sa inyo po, bilang isang nasa relationship po, Marami pa po akong matututunan sa inyo. Marami pa po akong matututunan sa church na to. Sama-sama po tayo. Tulong-tulungan po tayo. And yun lang po. Maraming salamat po sa inyong time. And to God be the glory po. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's the testimony of Jasper. A life who dreamed big. As a PBA player, as a varsity, I've seen him work hard for that but he didn't reach those dreams it started him to be broken it affected his family and basically it went down to being cursed with money kaya hirap talagang gawing Diyos ang pera it will affect your life it will affect your whole family but what happened to this life maybe your life is like him your life is like us who was despised just like Zerubbabel despised broken and cursed but What is God trying to tell us today? If your life is like this, God is saying, yeah, I know. You could not hide anything from me and this is just what I want you to do. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 3, it says, Therefore say to them, says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. If you're down there, thinking you're worthless, thinking it's over, thinking I, it's just better to die than to live. Wala na eh, nothing. Nothing's happening. God is telling you, just return to me. Try me one more time. Just come back to me once again. And I will return to you. And I'm gonna make your, bless, your life a blessing to many. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's God's word for all of us today. It's not over. It's not over. And if you're saying, Lord, today I want to experience your, your power once again in my life. Once I've went away, I've run away, but today, Lord, I want to come back to you and experience your power and favor 
not only for my life but for my whole family so if that's you come to the altar of the Lord and let us return to Jesus so as the worship team sings a song you're free and welcome to come to Jesus hallelujah Yes, you may free you're free to come to Jesus today. You may free be free to return. with all your heart when God is in it sing it there is no limit when God is for your life today. Sa lahat po na lumapit sa harap, pwede po ba natin itaas yung ating mga kamay? Sabayan niyo po ako sa panalangin nito. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, regard whatever the situation of my life, Lord, whatever the situation of my it may be despised, it may be despised, it may be broken, it may be broken, God, it may be cursed, God, it may be cursed, but today, Today, I return to you. I return to you. That you may return to me. That you may return and to me. From this day forward, and from this day I'm forward, gonna receive, I'm gonna receive the, blessing the blessing and the outpour of the rain, the of rain for my life. For my life. Hallelujah. Just give God a very best clap offering. Hallelujah. Could we raise up our tithes and offering to our God? Tithes and offering. Let's give the glory to our God. So 
Keep on while preparing your tithes and offering. Could we all stand as you pray for our tithes? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we lift up our tithes and offering to you. And Lord God, we just give you the praise. Lord God, these things, Lord God, these tithes and offering, that we didn't get it from our own. Lord God, these things came from you, Lord God, and remove, Lord God, the curse of this money in our lives. Lord God, we don't want to have that curse of money, Lord God, because it's destroying us. Right now, we lift up our tithes, Lord God, to give glory to your holy name. Lord God, bless your people today. Lord God, you have come here, Lord God, in celebration of your goodness for our lives. Lord God, you are alive. Lord God, you are not dead. Lord God, you are alive and we worship you, Lord God, this morning. Lord God, bless your people as you leave this house. Lord God, we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Go in peace. God bless everyone.